So before I get started, I want to give you a very important resource. So you can take out your phones or write it down somewhere. It's a website. And this website is going to help you navigate the upcoming somewhat complex process of benefiting from what's in the Inflation Reduction Act. This website is whitehouse.gov slash clean energy. Whitehouse.gov slash clean energy. We're going to go into some of the details and information that you need to benefit from the IRA, but this website will help you to navigate. Now, show of hands, how many of you are going to commit to sharing that website with 10 other people directly? Come on now, I need 100% hands. Because let me tell you what I was told by one of the directors of the Environmental Production Protection Agency. They said, Jamal, the more you organize your district, and the more people are on the same page and engaging in benefiting from what the IRA has to offer, the more money your district will receive. So that means you can't keep this website to yourself. You want to post it on social media. You want to share it personally with friends, not in a mass text, but individual text messages so that people can sign up for the newsletter and stay connected so any information that comes out, you receive that information. And you're going to get a ton more information from the presentation in a few moments. There is a global mission to end our dependency on fossil fuels as quickly as possible. Some say 2050, I say that's too long. Some say 2040, I say that's too long. People from my neck of the woods say 2030, maybe 2035, which is very ambitious and very urgent. But what's important for us to know is we have the technology to do this right now. We can mobilize wind and solar and geothermal resources right now to end our dependency on fossil fuels. And that's why we're here tonight to begin that conversation. Now, during my first term, you may have heard me talk about something called Build Back Better. Everywhere I went, every community event, I was talking about Build Back Better, which was part of President Biden's climate initiative. There were many other things in that bill, childcare, housing, what have you, but climate was the big piece there. And we were very close very, very close if it weren't for uh, one or two Democrats in the Senate to passing Build Back Better, would have been, which would have been transformational on an entirely another level. But to the point that was made earlier, we weren't able to get everything we wanted in Build Back Better, but we got the Inflation Reduction Act, which caps insulin drug costs at $35 a month, does some other things, but the big thing is a historic investment in clean, green, sustainable, renewable energy. 370 billion, I believe. Now, that was a fight. Those of you who worked closely with me during my first term, you know how much of a fight this was. You know that everywhere I went, I had to sell it again and again and again to people so that they got it, they would buy in, they would understand. So this did not come easy. And to your point of voting and not to get political, you have to elect the right people into office who will fight for the things that you know are important. Not just me, but anyone. So that was a, a fight. And we won round one of that fight. And I, and I say round one because we're going to need additional investments in these areas. Because if we do not, you know, the president just made a decision recently that I just strongly disagree with. He's approving an oil and gas drilling project in Alaska, which is going to be like the equivalent of putting two million cars back on the road every year for the next 
five to ten years. I forget the number. That is not what has been advised by the international community fighting, fighting against climate change. So we're going to have to continue to invest in getting away from fossil fuels. Now, with the IRA, there are different layers to this. One layer involves the individual, homeowners. There's a process of electrifying your home. Electric stove, retrofitting, solar panels, etc., where you can get rebates to do this that will dramatically decrease your energy costs, which we know utilities are off the hook right now in terms of the price. So we seek to dramatically reduce those costs. The IRA rebates are a big part of that, and we're going to talk about how to help you get those. So that's the individual home. Small businesses can benefit from this as well. So that is also very, very key. Buildings can benefit as well. The Green New Deal for Public Schools seeks to invest $10 trillion over the next 10 years to green every single public school in America, beginning with the, low, the poorest ones. And you say, where we get the money for, where we get $10 trillion? If we got money for wars, we should be able to feed the poor. It's my position. Many others as well. So these are all levels of the IRA. Another level that is really exciting is there are going to be major grants available that haven't come online yet. They're going to be coming uh, in the beginning of the summer where we can apply as a coalition for these major grants and work on really transformational projects in our district. That includes geothermal uh, energy to heat and cool a small community or neighborhood. That includes trans transferring or using sewage and transferring it into renewable energy. They have technology that does this. And that includes many things like that. Those are the bigger projects, and those are the projects we're going to be going for as well in partnership with League of Conservation Voters, in partnership with cities like New Rochelle, and in partnership with an organization called Sustainable Westchester, as well as other organizations. Now, we have Jim here from Sustainable Westchester, and I told him I would yield a few moments to him just for him to say a few words about who he is, what he does, what he's doing tomorrow, and information that can be helpful to you. So, Jim, I yield you a few minutes. That's the word. Those are the words we use in Congress. I yield my time to Jim to say a few words. Go ahead, Jim. You can project your voice and use the mic. It's up to you. Way. Thank you so much, Congressman. The work you're doing is invaluable to us, and we want to get behind everything that you're standing for and that you're making possible in Washington. Sustainable Westchester is an umbrella organization serving the communities of Westchester. Almost every community in Westchester is a member of Sustainable Westchester. New Rochelle is one of our most visible and loved members so glad to be here we have great programs going on in many communities um, one of the programs we're promoting tonight as julie said is grid rewards which is um, a way for anyone who pays a utility bill to help lower their energy costs and lower that bill and i'm going to point over here to lauren royce who is the program manager for Sustainable Westchester, this program. Lauren, just let people know what they can do with regard to the table. And, sure. and Thanks, everybody, for being here today. And Julie had shouted out Grid Rewards. Um, it's a great opportunity. If you're someone that is paying an electricity bill, you can actually get paid to reduce your electricity at key times over the summer. So I live in an apartment, and last year I got about $100 cash back by my participation. And really, there's a great narrative of energy saving and carbon reduction. So if you're running your dryer when there's a heat wave, 
That is a terrible thing to do for the environment and Grid Rewards as an app that you download to your phone can help you really understand the why and how of that. So if you want to sign up, please definitely visit the Sustainable Westchester table and we can tell you all about peaker power plants and protecting communities with Grid Rewards. So thanks, thanks for letting us talk. Absolutely. Yes. Now Grid Rewards is an app, correct? Yes. It's an app that pays money after you grid rewards is the app please write it down you can download it right now while you're sitting here there's an event tomorrow at a at a pub so if you want to drink some pub you could do that but the event has good information yeah well it's all on the table all outside. at the table that's one of our programs sustainablewestchester.org if you want to go there we've got a lot of programs going all throughout the county and we're lining up with the congressman to make sure we get funding for great projects here in Westchester yes. as a result of the Inflation Reduction Act. Thank you, Congressman. Big teams happen, big teams, big teams. So I want to also shout out, I know Noam was recognized. I don't know if these other elected officials were, so let me just shout out Yadera Ramos, New Rochelle City Council. Is Yadera in the house? Did she have to leave? She was here. Uh, Terry Clements, Westchester legislator. Damon Marr, Westchester County legislator and Daryl Taylor from Tuckahoe, Tuckahoe trustee. Tuckahoe went out, hey! Tuckahoe round of applause. So always great to see Tuckahoe. So I'm gonna close with something else that's very exciting. For the first time in human history, we've achieved something called fusion ignition. Has anyone heard of this? There we go, got a few. Now I'm gonna try to explain what it is and you hold me accountable if I get it wrong, okay? So, this is not going to go well. So, fusion ignition. It took a whole bunch of lasers, shot it into a cylinder, and then on the other side of the cylinder, more energy came out than went in when they shot it. How's that explanation? Was that good? Good enough. All right. Okay, good enough. The point is, we use. We use, let's say, 100 megajoules to shoot into the cylinder, and 200 meg megajoules came out. More energy came out than went in. That's the point. It wasn't 100. Don't quote me on that. If there's any journalists in here, I'm not saying that's the exact number. Here's the point. It's the first time in human history that has happened. And this potentially can be a moonshot moment in terms of getting us to unlimited sustainable energy. Very exciting stuff. So I will be sharing some information about this, but I wanted to mention it to you because our nation is not just leading with this investment here, but this new fusion ignition breakthrough is potentially transformational on many levels. So thank you so much. Enjoy the presentation and I'll pass it back over to our presenters. Thank you. Thank you, and I'm so glad to hear you talking about thermal energy networks because we know that if you do geothermal, not just for your home, but for a neighborhood of homes at a more of, at scale, we can generate really good union jobs and we can get you energy that's much more cost effective, much, much more consistent, and is not subject to OPEC's Winds, which we are all on the roller coaster ride of with fossil fuel reliance right now. Um, and that's something that we're working on very actively at the state level. Um, we just got a law passed last year to do that. So it's super exciting. Um, so many opportunities. But Matt Salton, who is NYLCV's uh, federal campaign manager, is going to tell us more about what we all can get from the Inflation Reduction Act. So over to you, Matt. Thank you very much. So, when talking about the Inflation Reduction Act, it's a big law, there's a lot of components to it. So what exactly are we talking about? Well, there are two distinct portions of it. There's the Affordable Clean Energy Plan portion. And when we talk about that, we're talking about clean energy production, we're talking about transportation, we're talking about buildings, we're talking about agriculture, healthy communities, clean manufacturing, and public lands and waters. All of these things together, contribute to the Affordable Clean Energy Plan in the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. Quick summary of the benefits. As um, Julie and the Congressman noted, this plan will help us reduce our carbon emissions 
roughly 40% by 2030, uh, about a gigaton of carbon emission of greenhouse gases. It will save households hundreds on energy costs, up to $1,800 per year for those who take the incentive. At least 40% of the benefits will go to disadvantaged communities that we see in purple in this district who meet those criteria. It will create up to 9 million new jobs. This is a big jobs program that will help us transition to a clean energy economy and bring workers along for the ride. And it will avert 3,900 premature deaths and 100,000 asthma attacks yearly by 2030. When we burn less fossil fuels, public health gets better. This puts us on track for a 50% reduction, that which is the goal that the Biden administration has put forward in accordance with the Paris Climate Accord. Before the Inflation Reduction Act was passed, we were looking at 24 to 35% reduction. Now we're looking at 31 to 44%. And to bridge that divide to get to the 50%, it's going to take cities and villages and towns and states, and yes, the federal government to do more to get us there. But first and foremost, we're talking about clean energy production. We need to ensure that the grid uh, is expanded, the electric grid, and that it's clean so that we can transition other parts of the economy to run on that clean grid. So we're talking about extending tax incentives for clean energy, renewable energy development. We're talking about incentivizing people to develop clean energy technology in the United States through a direct pay, which is very new, where small municipalities, towns and villages and nonprofits who might not have tax liability can all of a sudden crop up and start doing clean energy projects as well. So this is going to take all of us to be involved. It's talking about an additional 10% benefit for low income and at risk communities. And there's a $27 billion greenhouse gas reduction fund. This will fund green banks across the country. New York State has a green bank, which will then in turn incentivize and give out uh, equity to private developers of clean energy development. What this all amounts to is having clean energy developments popping up across our communities to help us get off of fossil fuels. One of the things that we have to get off of fossil fuels and power with clean energy is transportation. That's why there is a tax credit for electric vehicles up to $7,500. Whether or not a vehicle qualifies is based on sourcing of the battery for that vehicle, how big the battery is, where it was final manufacturing and assembly of the battery and the vehicle. It can get confusing. The IRS has a website that has a current list of which vehicles are available. That's on the back of the sheets that you got at registration, and we'll be going into that a bit later. In New York State, we have an additional $2,000 rebate at point of purchase. When you buy a car, an electric vehicle, that will be reduced from your overall cost when you buy it. The Inflation Reduction Act covers 30% of the cost of electric school buses and also has grants that go out to school districts to apply from the EPA. In the first round of grants, New York State got 184 electric school buses, which means kids can now get on the bus, go to school, and not have the same kind of coming into contact with emissions that cause asthma and other respiratory illnesses. And finally, we want to make these vehicles in the United States, both because we want good, clean energy union jobs, and we also want to lower prices for consumers. And one way to do that is to avert some of the supply chain issues that we've been seeing by producing things in the United States. So this is a jobs program. $2 billion in grants to convert manufacturing facilities to produce these electric vehicles here in New York and here in the United States. All of this transition to clean energy means we will have healthier communities, lower air pollution, uh, and more prosperity. There's funding for air quality monitoring in environmental justice communities, the purple communities uh, in the district that you saw on the first slide. 
There's $3 billion in environmental and climate justice block grants to help reduce those pollution and emissions in those communities. There's $3 billion in funding to help revitalize communities that have been torn apart by redlining and other infrastructure going up like highways that we can then use these funds to reconnect communities, increase access to transit, and help people overall. And finally, as Julie alluded to, there's a Justice 40 initiative. Anything that the federal government is doing right now must abide by Justice 40, which means 40% of some of these investments must go toward disadvantaged communities, low-income communities. They borrowed it from New York. Uh, we were happy to lend it. But that is going to be on every one of these incentives. Clean manufacturing. We want to bring manufacturing back to the United States. There are programs here to help do that. I've covered some of them. Investments of $6 billion for transformative industrial programs that will help energy intensive manufacturing facilities and industries make upgrades to reduce their pollution. We see there the North Territory GM assembly plant. We want to bring industry back to the United States, and this time we want to do it so that communities don't feel the brunt of industrial waste and pollution, but feel the benefit of clean energy jobs. Buildings are a big part, as uh, Julie and the Congressman both alluded to. Uh, in New York State, it's one of the highest emitters of carbon. We need to get buildings off of fossil fuels and onto a clean electric grid. And there are incentives to do so. There are incentives to make buildings more energy efficient because the less, the more efficient a building is, the less energy you need to power it, which means that we can power it cleaner, easier. There's more money for disadvantaged communities to do this so that nobody gets left behind in this clean energy transition. There's funding to make affordable housing more water and energy efficient as we're seeing more devastating storms as a result of the climate crisis. And there is a jobs component to this. There's $200 million for energy efficiency job training and nearly $9 billion for residential efficiency projects and consumer rebates uh, for building and appliance electrification. And we'll get into very specific numbers for those in a minute. There's money for agriculture and public lands to again reduce the amount of storm surge we're seeing, increased resiliency on our lands and urban forests. But why switch to energy efficiency? What are the benefits of doing this? Clean air means reduced emissions, which means healthier communities. We do this because using less energy will save us money. We do this because if we take advantage of the incentives, then we can get new appliances. We want people to get new energy efficient appliances, but we can't expect people to do it on their own. And this is the federal government coming together, partnering with people to say that we want you to do this and we're going to be here along for the ride with you. So the Inflation Reduction Act calculator, this link is also included on that page on the back. This is going to be a very helpful guide to break down exactly which benefits are available. It's also on the front of your sheets both which tax credits are available and which rebates are available to you for your specific situation. Because these are based on area median income, uh, you have to put forward your zip code. So I chose New Rochelle High School. Put your homeowner status, either a renter or a homeowner. Household income, tax filing status, and household size. So this is just an example. Based on these numbers, you can look forward to upfront discounts of about $14,000. Because this income is below 80% of the area median income from New Rochelle, they can look forward to 100% of the benefits. For tax credits, you can look forward to $850, an estimated bill savings per year of $1,150. So I've been going around these terms, tax credit and rebate, a little bit. I want to just give an example of what these are. Tax credit, credits only offset tax balances that are due. So if you own nothing in tax, then you don't get a benefit from this credit. An example of this is if you buy an electric car and are eligible for the $7,500 tax credit, you will claim that on your taxes and it will be reduced from what taxes you owe federally. A rebate doesn't require 
the owner to owe any taxes and will be applied to the purchase at the point of sale. An example of this in New York is we have a $2,000 rebate off the purchase price of a car when you buy it. Eligibility is a big factor here. So again, I said it's based on area median income, which for this zip code is $112,600. So households whose annual income are less than 90,080 can receive 100% of the benefits for their projects. Households making between 90,080 and 168,900 can receive 50% of the project costs covered. And if an individual or household makes more than 168,900, then they will not be eligible for these benefits. Eligibility for EVs is different, and this is currently what is the case. We're waiting on further guidance to kind of clarify these rules uh, sometime this month. But right now is cars under 55,000, the MSRP price, and SUVs, vans, and pickup trucks under 80,000, depending on the model. Again, that IRS website will tell you which ones are applicable. The income cap here for consumers is 150,000 for single filers, 225 for head of household, and 300,000 for joint filers. There will be an option to apply the credit to point of sale starting in 2024, so you'll get that discount right away starting next year. And as I said, where the car and its components were made will affect eligibility, and new guidance will be coming sometime this month. So here are the credits here, breaking them down. This is what you'll see on the Inflation Reduction Act calculator once you enter your information. So as you can see, these are the tax credits where you can buy the product now, and then you can get the benefit on your taxes when you file. So you have battery storage installation up to 30%, geothermal heating installation up to 30%, electric panel $600, electric vehicle charger up to $1,000, new vehicle $7,500, a used vehicle which is new $4,000 for a used electric vehicle, heat pump air conditioner and heater $2,000, heat pump water heater $2,000, rooftop solar installation 30% of the cost weatherization of your home, $1,200. And again, all of these are available now if you purchase them and then you uh, claim them on your taxes. These are the rebates that the Congressman was talking about a little bit. These are the electrification rebates, which will all be available later uh, this year because the state needs to give some guidance to them as well. But these are the kinds of things that you can look forward to right at the point of purchase when you buy them. We're talking about up to $4,000 for an electrical panel. $840 to transition your stove from gas to electric. Electric wiring to be redone up to $2,500. Heat pump water heater, $1,750. Heat pump air conditioner and heater, $8,000. Heat pump clothes dryer, $840. Weatherization for your home, $1,600. And efficiency rebates up to $8,000. To get into some more New York State specifics, there's a heat program, clean heat program uh, for New York State, which can save folks money uh, by investing in more efficient appliances. There's the Energy Star program. There's a heat pump program, which uh, gives additional benefits for folks looking to switch over from having a gas or oil boiler to having a heat pump. Con Ed offers a rebate of $1,000 for customers who complete eligible work when it comes to sealing their homes to make them more insulated and therefore more efficient, saving you money. And switching your heating to geothermal offers significant rebates that are available via utility, whether it be Con Ed or NYSEG, uh, and you can take advantage of the 30% federal tax credit to do this, or up to $5,000 with the state tax credit. All of these are going to be very individualized based on your income and your filing status and everything else. So we advise you to talk to a tax professional about these, but this is just an overview of what you can expect to see. So I think we're ready for the congressman to come back up now and get to some of your questions uh, in the Q&A. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yes, if you have if you have a card, you want to ask a question, you can give it to me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ask questions. Uh, Nia's handing out cards, <laughs> so we can do that. Okay. So before we go to questions, and thank you all so much for staying the entire time, and thank you for your questions. I just want to make a couple of points. So we talked about jobs, and that's obviously a huge benefit. We talked about savings. That's obviously another benefit. A third benefit that we didn't talk as much about is this saves lives because fossil fuels are killing people in a variety of ways. And this saves an estimate of 3,900 lives per year in terms of premature, premature death. Also, asthma is something that when we deal with the issue of environmental injustice and get off fossil fuels, you're gonna see asthma rates dramatically decrease which will obviously improve the quality of life of not just the individual, but the entire family. And also saves on healthcare costs over the lifespan. We are all in the process of building a new economy, an economy that's healthier for everyone, creates jobs, saves lives, lowers healthcare costs, stops frequency of storms, one other point that I always like to make that many people do not make. When you think about the issue of public safety, a lot of people commit harm or crime against their community because they don't have access or opportunity to many things. This provides more access and opportunity when we talk about jobs, entrepreneurship, and career opportunities. So I just wanted to mention those pieces as well. That's really important. Um, asthma is the number one cause of school absences, for example, um, and people are losing a lot of time. Think about when your kid is sick and you have to bring them to the doctor. You have the medical cost, you have the lost school time, you have the lost work time um, for, for the parents or the caregivers of those children. Um, and then obviously we have the same issues with adults missing work time. So it is, uh, it cannot be understated how important that is. Um, and New York State has already committed to moving to 100% clean energy for our power sector and working on reducing all of our other emissions across the entire economy by 2050. And this is gonna give a huge boost in how we can get there faster uh, and more affordably. So I think it's really important for us to, to do that. Um, we'll see if we can figure out the answers to some of these questions. So um, <clears throat> we have a question of, is there legal help for municipalities to navigate the regulations being written on the Inflation Reduction Act. At first, I want to say that there's multiple agencies that are working on this, and it's going to require both the state and the federal government to take actions for a variety of these things. So I think you're going to see a lot more guidance coming down. Matt referenced, you know, we're expecting the IRS to provide guidance um, on, for example, um, <clears throat> uh, the, the tax credits for electric vehicles, but we're also expecting them to provide uh, more guidance on what they're doing with respect to uh, you know renewable energy credits for uh, industrial scale, not for you in your home. That's more straightforward. But for the industrial scale, what what qualifies, what doesn't, when, how it's going to apply, and things like that. Um, are you aware, either of you, of legal aids for municipalities to help them navigate it, or other kinds of assistance? I am not at the moment, but I just want to say this is the beginning of an ongoing conversation. That's a really important point. In many ways, we are building the plane as we fly it. That sounds scary, but that's how innovation works. So right now, we are in the process of engaging multiple federal agencies uh, to make sure we have all of the up-to-date information so that we can share it with you all. How many of you are signed up for our newsletter? Okay, it seems like the majority, a lot of you are. If you're not, I just want to give you another website so you could go to and sign up for it because this is, this is how you stay up to date with all the stuff that's happening. Um, and again, once we know, you'll know. 
Uh, the website is bowman.house.gov. I'll say it again, Bowman, B-O-W-M-A-N, dot house, H-O-U-S-E, dot G-O-V. And the first thing that pops up is sign up for the newsletter. Please do so, and you'll be able to be up to date with all the information. Um, I think you had a response. Wait, I'm going to do this, because I think we should, I can get the microphone now, maybe easier, so, because we have, Twi we have live Twitter sure. happening, so people can watch. Yeah. Uh, so there's an organization called the Public Utility Law Project that primarily helps low-income folks uh, to access um, and help with their taxes, but I think they might have some resources for municipalities as well. So, Pulp, it's called Pulp, the Public Utility Law Project. Uh, our next question is project eligibility on median income is based on median income, but how is median income defined for a person? Is it based on gross income, net taxable income, some other thing? Do you know? Yeah, I believe it's just based on pre-tax annual income and it's based on your zip code in relation to others there. We'll confirm that. Um, that's an easy enough thing to provide. Um, Nia or Devin? Yeah. <laughs> Collecting questions? How do I hire a contractor when contractors seem to be um, more interested in money making you know, big, bigger buildings or more um, expensive homes? That seems to be a challenge. Does anyone have thoughts on that? Every question we do not have an answer for, I've taken notes and will definitely be following up. Thank you for the question. Is there a dedicated individual to bridge the gap uh, of New York State funding and federal funding? Um, is there, I think, this, is there a dedicated fund, right? I think that's probably, probably the question here. Um, I think. Yes, and our office will be the liaison doing exactly that, and we'll connect you to the uh, the actual fund. The person is going to be coming to visit the district uh, and do a tour um, and meet some folks, so it's happening, but that would be our office. For implementation of geothermal in the city, will retention funds be required for this to be successful? So I happen to know that one pretty well. We just did a forum last week on geothermal. The answer is no. There's so many things that you can use for geothermal that you don't even think of. Most of the time, you're talking about transferring heat amongst a system, so you can actually use waste heat from a data center, for example, and transfer it through the water into an apartment building that needs heat. Um, they're actually doing this uh, actively in certain places right now. Um, you can do bore, bore wells straight down uh, in order for them to you know, get to the, the solid state, basically, energy uh, that's in the ground. You can capture the heat from your wastewater, uh, and that will help to prevent it from being wasted. You're capturing that heat, and you're instead putting it into a heating system that can be networked across multiple buildings. Uh, you can capture the energy from the subway, um, like the waste heat from the subway, and that could be used to help to put in um, geothermal uh, our thermal energy networks might be a more appropriate way of thinking about it. So no, you don't need retention ponds. You can use uh, standing water like that. It would be deep within the water where you would get that energy where it's basically the same temperature year round. It's kind of like the fish still live just because the top is iced over, right? They're just further down because the water there stays about the same temperature much longer. So that, that is not an issue. Uh, for rebates for heat pumps, etc., that will be available late this year. 
Will they be retroactive or do you have to wait because they're only eligible at the point of sale? Yeah, they will not be retroactive uh, once the guidance comes out and then you purchase it, you will be able to take advantage of the rebate. But if you buy it now, you will only be able to take advantage of the tax credit. Building the plane, plane as we fly it, as, we, as we've been buying. Um, So a question is, is, um, is there something in place to provide immediate assistance for electricity bills? So not as part of the Inflation Reduction Act. The Inflation Reduction Act is really about taking proactive action. Uh, the state of New York provided um, a bunch of funds for, um, for consumers who were unable to pay their bills um, during the last few years. Uh, and they've sort of done, done payment forgiveness in a bunch of places. They just issued an order about that a few uh, a week ago, um, but I'm not I'm not aware of other programs. If you're not already eligible for like the LIHEAP program, which is the Low Income Heating um, Heat Energy Assistance Program, I believe is what that stands for, uh, which is primarily federally funded, but it's administered by the state of New York. Um, so that is a program that exists already for at least heat, uh, and there are certainly efforts underway to try and help control energy costs. So I don't know if either of you wants to add to that. So yes to all of that, uh, we introduced uh, the Heating and Cooling Relief Act to invest more money in this particular program uh, because Con Ed, as we all know, is out of control. Um, but, but moving in the direction of rebates and tax credits and electrifying your home will get your energy costs much lower, make sure they're much lower than they currently are. It just, it's not immediate, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, when will you not be able to buy a gas-powered car in New York? So the state of New York has adopted a law. We're, we're a California car state uh, that uh, by 2035, all light-duty vehicles, so that's your personal vehicles, will have to be zero emission. Uh, for medium and heavy-duty vehicles, uh, that is 2045, but it's a little squishier. Um, on exactly what that looks like, um, but certainly we're, we're, we're on the upstream on this, but the law in the, the, the land here in New York uh, requires that all, electric, all vehicle sales for personal light duty vehicles will be uh, zero emission by 2035. When will people in New York not be allowed to replace fossil fuel appliances? So there's not currently a prohibition on that right now. Uh, the governor has made a proposal to address um, heating appliances as part of the state budget. Um, and there is, we, last year, a law was passed that requires uh, much more efficient appliances, which would include addressing the use of fossil fuels as part of that, but there is not currently a ban on replacing your fossil fuel um, infrastructure or a sales prohibition. So that does not yet exist. Um, there is likely going to be passed this year based on the fact that both the Senate and the State Assembly included in their one house budgets a requirement for all new construction of buildings to be zero emission. So that would not have any fossil fuel infrastructure in new construction starting uh, sometime within the next five, six years. Um, sooner for small buildings, a little bit further out for larger buildings. Um, so I'm expecting that that will pass this year. Um, the governor had proposed it last year and the Senate had advanced it, but unfortunately the assembly wasn't on board yet. Um, so we're hoping that we'll be able to um, get that passed this year. So it's not, not a full ban. It doesn't deal with existing buildings, but we're trying to, we're making progress, making progress. But I think really important is that Congress included money for people to replace those to try and provide incentives. So they're trying the carrot method while the state is still working on some of the sticks. That makes sense. All right, are the rebates tax-free? Yes. 
That was a guess, by the way. I did not know that. But she gave it to me. I figured that was the right answer. Thank you. Always nice when your congressman says that's not going to increase your taxes, right? So here's, Matt, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but tax credits versus rebates. <clears throat> if, if you don't owe taxes to the IRS, can that credit be converted to a rebate or refund to the taxpayer? Like, are they refundable tax credits? Uh, the only instance of this is really the clean energy. Um, it's like a production tax credit or ITC. These are available in direct pay form only if you are uh, local government or a nonprofit, but other than that, no. Okay. I've never seen Congress do a refundable tax credit. New York State sometimes does those. Um, <clears throat> are these programs limited to Westchester or is New York City included? New York City is also included, yes. We have to figure out the buildings and public housing piece of this. We also have to figure out, and maybe you all have an answer to this, but ask this question. If I can't afford to buy electric items to then get the rebate at a later date, what am I to do? I don't know if you have that answer, but that was one of my questions. I don't know that we have an answer to that. Um, I think they're trying to, the state can come up with some programs that might make it easier for people um, to help address lower, lower income people. I don't believe so. Yeah, um, uh, unfortunately there's nothing right now, but what I will say is by incentivizing the production of these kinds of appliances and products in the United States, that prices will come down uh, to the thing about when will I not be able to buy a gas car? By 2030, because of all of the investment, because of all the production of electric vehicles in the country, it'll be much more economically beneficial and make a lot more sense to buy an electric car over a gas car, uh, regardless of why you want to do it. This is a sort of similar question. Um, I think we answered this perhaps already. I'm gonna convert to an air source heat pump um, heating system shortly, will the rebates be retroactively available to me? Right, so, so you might want to talk to your contractor and see if you can hold off a little tiny bit so you can take advantage of that. Um, and I normally wouldn't want to say, please stay on your fossil fuels, but it might be beneficial for you to stay on it for a couple of months when we're talking about these are things that are going to be later this year, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, <clears throat> are there safeguards in place to maintain the integrity of the IRA in the next five to 10 years? Um, as there are power shifts in both the executive and Congress, potentially, um, what safeguards to the plans are there? Uh, yes, there are. Um, however, to the point of the question, yes, if the wrong person gets into the White House, um, anything can happen but yes there are safeguards to maintain the integrity of the ira we just got we meaning members of congress just have to be diligent to ensure there can't be any rollbacks but 2024 does matter um, in terms of this question i don't know if there's an executive order uh, that can be put in place by a certain president that the supreme court would then upheld uphold because it's more conservative to roll this back so, very good question. Coming back to what I started with, the most important thing you can do to act on climate change is to vote. Um, uh, someone is asking, is there a way to have someone come over uh, to like visit a home and say, what, what's the best option? Um, there are, you can through Con Edison, because uh, everybody here would have Con Edison, um, you can get an energy audit done of your home uh, and they will give you assessments and recommendations. There are a list of contractors that NYSERDA, uh has, um, you know, has basically said they're, they qualify for these programs that your utilities are required to provide. Um, 
that they can do an assessment and they'll tell you if you should do insulation and air sealing and they'll tell you if you should change your windows or what the benefit would that be. They'll tell you what you know your, your cost benefits could be of taking on different technologies and what might be a good fit. So having one of those energy audits done is a really good way of assessing uh, what might be the best technology for your particular circumstance. Um, and I always laugh about the fact that like, you know, we can get solar in a place like Syracuse, you can do solar in a place like Westchester. <laughs> um, someone says I want to, and we kind of answered this earlier, but um, I want to still have a gas stove because of all the power outages and how can that be insured. So as I mentioned, there is right now, there is no ban on, um, on, uh, on re retaining your uh, appliances. Uh, even when the governor's talking about some of these objectives related to heating appliances, it's much further out in the future when there'll be hopefully more options, um, increased grid reliability to help with that, which is one of the reasons why, for example, battery storage uh, is a very important component locally to ensure the stability of the grid, the reliability of the grid, um, so we don't have as many outages um, out there. Can I see some of your questions? Okay. My house is surrounded by very tall trees, making it ineligible for solar panels. Are there grants available to take down the trees to let in sunlight and more uh, possible to install solar panels? So no, no one's going to give you money to take the trees down. Um, I do think that there's a good option of looking at, uh, at geothermal, like the thermal energy is a, is a really efficient way of dealing with heating and cooling. Um, solar panels are generally speaking, you know, you can use them for, for two different reasons. One for electricity generation, uh, the other is for um, heating and cooling. So the, there, are, uh, there are other options, but there are no grants available for taking down the trees to make them more, uh, to, to give you more sunlight, so to speak. And we like the trees. The trees help to reduce temperature. The trees are probably preventing you from needing more air conditioning. <laughs> um, does the IRA or New York State programs incentivize transitioning to non-gas powered landscaping equipment? Uh, so Senator Harcum uh, from Westchester, and I, I apologize, I'm forgetting the assembly member who carried the bill, sponsored legislation in 2022 that was actually on NYLCB's scorecard uh, that would have uh, required, not, not a requirement, but would have provided rebates for this, and I believe the governor vetoed it at the very end of the legislative session. I'll confirm that, um, but I think it was vetoed probably because it was taking on um, budget action outside of the state budget. Um, that's very often why those kinds of bills get vetoed, even if there's not a philosophical opposition. Um, but there is no current uh, mandate for that, but that was meant to be an incentive, was to provide some rebates. Are there other rebates? Okay, I didn't think so. No, I don't think for the IRA, they were more focused on uh, inside of your home versus outside of your home. All right, uh, this question, will grid, will grid rewards have a connection to contractors to facilitate jobs using the clean energy rebates? Um, I don't think so. Uh, definitely attend that event tomorrow if you can to ask that question and learn more about that. But I do not think so. I don't know if you all know. No, the answer is no, it does not. Okay, all right. I don't think so either. Um, next question. Can someone create one website that consolidates federal, state, and local programs with eligibility so people don't have to work so much waste so much time or miss out on programs. Absolutely needed. It doesn't currently exist. It's something that I have brought up as needing to be done. Uh, but that website, whitehouse.gov slash clean energy, is a good place uh, to start. I'm sorry? Oh, those are being created. The League of Conservation Rules is created. I'd love to hear that we're working on it. 
it's exciting. There's there's a lot, it is, there's a lot of information. We're trying to put them into places so that it's more accessible for people. We recognize that it's, it's challenging. There's there's so many different resources out there and it's hard for people to put them all together. Um, so uh, I'm glad to hear that we are working on that currently. Um, I have an easy one, maybe. Our hybrid vehicles part of the clean energy plan for 2035. Oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking, of, were they eligible for tax credits? Um, I think it depends on the vehicle and it depends on how California defines some of these items. Um, certainly they are right now, plug-in hybrids are eligible for um, some of the tax credits that we're talking about, um, at least for the state tax credits. Um, but it, it depends honestly on how California defines them. Um, but the, the goal is to be off of gasoline powered vehicles uh, after 2035 for new vehicles. Now keep in mind that there will be, you know, millions and millions of cars on the road that still rely on gasoline in 2035 because our cars last obviously a long time. They last 15, 20 years. Um, so there is an expectation that we, we're, we're trying to, to reduce uh, the amount of, of fossil fuels that we're, that we're using and hopefully we can do that more rapidly. Um, we are, I know we are at 740. Um, so we're a little past when we were supposed to be. So I'm really happy if we had so many good questions. Thank you so much to all of you for participating today. Um, thank you so much to the congressman uh, for spending so much time with us all here. Um, for your work on getting the Inflation Reduction Act passed and then critically making sure that people know about the opportunities that are out there. So we're going to be spending, and thank you to Matt for your great presentation. We're going to be making that available. Um, we'll send it around to folks who signed up tonight. Um, if you, I hope you got some food. Thank you so much again. Pardon? Oh yeah, there's more food available. I have written remarks. I should read them. <laughs> um, you know, it's really important for all of us to do our part, and that's why it was really critical for all of you to be here tonight. Um, I really want to give a final shout out to our partners from Ground Rock Hudson Valley and Sustainable Westchester. The congressman has done an excellent job of reminding folks about the Gridworks event uh, that's tomorrow and to go see them if you have not already. Um, you know, we again encourage you to sign up because strength is in our numbers so please sign up with the league of conservation voters education fund follow us on twitter on facebook on instagram on youtube uh, and get involved as much as possible and have a great night thank you, thank you.